When you look at what the market has done, when you look at the rally that we saw, especially in European stocks this month, what's the next thing they'll be looking for for a leg up? Is it vaccine news or is that already completely priced in? No, I, I doubt it's priced in. I mean, I, I think the, the big economic story on the vaccine is, is the wedge that you've seen between very, very weak consumer confidence and, and strength in, in confidence indicators elsewhere. And so I, I think as we head into next year and the consumer starts to get some momentum, you're going to see the rally continue. And I guess the, the big question for me is when this vaccine story starts to become much more of a fixed income event. Right now it's been all equities, but fixed income yields look a little bit low to me. But that would be on what uh, progress for a lot of these companies going forward in terms of revenue. Is there not a danger that as the growth gets better, we're going to see inflation and therefore a change in monetary policy? Yeah, I don't. I don't think we're going to see a change in monetary policy. But that's that's probably one of the important points. That to me, the the, the big story next year is that you should get steeper curves. You could, should get steeper curves because economic growth is going to pick up. Fiscal policy is going to be a support. Um, there's going to be a lot of supply, and, and, and central banks aren't going to do anything. And, and so steeper curves, I think, are going to be the, the biggest risk to this, this equity rally. But that's probably a story for later in 2021. So, Jim, you're not worried about inflation? I am worried about inflation, but I think inflation is a second half of the year story. If you look at the, 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 the details on inflation, we're still very much in the, in the negative demand shock portion of this crisis. I think as we head into the middle of next year, we'll start to see a bit more of that medium run inflation risk uh, story start to, to take hold. So what happens to, is it, is it you know, robust inflation? It, does it change our growth patterns? Um, it's, no, I mean, I think the growth patterns will will probably help to 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 drive it. So, you know, inflation is is something that we haven't seen in in, in a very long period of time. Uh, but certainly, it's the it's it's something that I would certainly worry about uh, second half of next year. But but if you're worrying about it in the second half of next year, do you not need to you know take stock of that into the first six months of 2021 if it rapidly changes? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think you do. And again, I, I, I feel like the equity markets properly reflect that. To me, where the complacency is, is, is fixed income. You've got 10-year bond yields at, at minus 60 basis points, 10 basis points below the policy rate. That is where you need to see uh, the market start reflecting inflation risks. And that hasn't happened yet. Where do you see uh, Portuguese bond yields in the next couple of, of days? Will they ever touch zero? Will they go into negative territory? And what does that tell us? Well, listen, I, I, I think the, the outlook for the European periphery bond market is still is still pretty positive. I think the, the bulk of the rally has already happened, but uh, in the, the, the combination of a very low supply uh, across periphery, including Portugal, uh, along with uh, a strong economic recovery and a lot of support from the ECB would argue that uh, Portuguese yields are probably going to keep going lower. The periphery will do generally pretty well next year. Jim, given all of this, what do you do with emerging markets? Where do you see the biggest value out there amongst asset classes? Well, listen, I, I think emerging markets are set for a much better year next year. The global backdrop uh, is much more constructive. The, the policy uh, in the G10 is, is, is very constructive. And there's a foundation of growth in a lot of these economies uh, that should continue. So Asia has clearly been, been driving the growth story for the past six months. But we look at places like Brazil, uh, places like Poland, places like South Korea, uh, and you've got a lot of growth momentum heading into 2021. What's the, the haven that you'd be looking at right now? I don't know whether you look at, you know, gold or Bitcoin or you actually go to yen and Swissy. Well, listen, I, I, I think that there's there's not a lot of havens that 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 are particularly cheap right now. Uh, I would suppose that uh, gold still looks like a, a fairly good asset to hold in a world where real yields are going to remain very, very low. But I'm not sure how much up, further upside you're going to get from here. And so what else would you be buying? Well, you know, listen, I, I, I think there's there's a, a lot of uh, currencies you can be buying. The euro looks still to be reasonably good value. Um, I do think the Japanese yen in the world of, of an Asian economic outperformance looks like uh, a reasonably good story. Uh, but there isn't many safe havens left out there right now. And if you're going to buy them, you're going to have to buy them at fairly expensive levels.